The opening scene features a man named Miles Elliott who works as a copywriter at Pool Branding Firm. He is struggling to focus on his work, which becomes evident when he requests more time to complete his project. Displeased, his boss turns to another co-worker named Dan, who takes control of the situation and piles more misery on Miles. After work, the two friends meet at a pub, where Miles wonders how Dan made such an improvement in life. In response, the latter discloses a secret. He went to a spa called top happy that changed his entire life. Since then, he is much happier and feels more energetic. Tell me you discovered a rub and tug without telling me you discovered a rub and tug, Miles says. He also hands him the spa card, suggesting that he visit the place himself. Back at home, Miles' wife Kate, as usual, nags him to have a baby and start a family. However, his overworked brain prevents from getting out of his stale and monotonous life. As he retires for bed, he looks at the spa card and contemplates following his colleague's advice. The next morning, Miles contacts the spa to get an appointment, but to his shock, he learns that the charge is a whopping $50,000. Must be one hell of a tug, he thinks. Desperate to get rid of the current lifestyle, Miles decides to risk all of his savings and drives towards the spa. Once there, he is greeted by two Korean gentlemen who brief him about the process of modifying his DNA to create a newer version of himself. With Miles's agreement, the two men take him to an operating room and put him under anesthetic. In the next scene, Miles regains consciousness and finds himself in a grave covered by a plastic sheet. He frantically tears up the plastic and frees himself, but now he is in the middle of the forest, dressed only in an adult diaper. Despite being in a confused state, he ventures through the woods for Miles in a desperate attempt to make his way home. After six hours of walking, he finally arrives home, only to hear his wife speaking to a man upstairs. Believing that it's an intruder, he quickly grabs an axe and prepares to attack. But as he corners him, he is shocked to learn that the man is another version of himself. When Miles asks for his identity, the newer version claims that he is a resident of this home. He also appears to know everything about Miles' life. After a small scuffle, the two confused Miles' drive back to the spa, which was the site of his last memory before the grave. There, they learn that they have been cloned. Here, it's revealed that the two Korean experts clone their customers and get rid of the original one by burying them outside the state park. However, their experiment has gone wrong this time because the original version managed to survive. As a result, the experts offer them a 10% fee refund as compensation. Here's five grand. Enjoy a lifetime of cosmic terror. For now, the two Miles have to share the same life. The scene then cuts to the flashback, depicting the perspective of the clone version of Miles after he woke up in the spa. He now seems to be energetic and happy, unlike the original one. When he gets in his car, he learns that he doesn't even need his glasses anymore. Following this, he runs through the cornfields, enjoying the beauty of nature and the sun glinting through the stalks. Miles' bliss carries over into the office, where his co-workers notice a positive change in him. He enthusiastically presents his new proposal, which is ultimately accepted by his boss. Later, at home, he makes dinner for Kate and unusually shows his affection towards her. He even agrees to start a family and promises to visit the hospital for a fertility test. He's in such a good mood that he's willing to spank it into a cup. Following this, the timelines merge back to the present, where the original and the clone version confront each other and end up at the spa. After learning the whole truth, Miles' clone feels overwhelmed and dissatisfied. He doesn't know why he was created, nor what his purpose in life is. In the aftermath, the two of them demand a full refund and an additional 10000 for the trouble that they have caused. When the Koreans refuse, Miles threatens to disclose their illegal cloning practice to the FDA, finally making them agree. Following this, the two Miles' split the cash in half and go to a restaurant to discuss what they should do next. The original one persuades his clone to disappear from his life, highlighting that he can travel all over the world without any worries. However, it's a poor consolation prize for a man who feels that it's not the life that he really wants. Despite being sad, the clone version reluctantly agrees to leave. Later, while driving towards the airport, Miles 
Charles' clone receives a call from Kate, and he can barely hold back the tears upon hearing her voice. This prompts him to change his mind and head back home. Meanwhile, the original Miles is at work, where he realizes that his clone has built up a career-defining opportunity. His boss appears to be impressed by the new idea and suggests that he keep working on it. However, Miles doesn't understand the clone's proposal, which stresses him out. Unable to figure out the solution, he dials his clone for assistance. However, he is taken aback when he learns that the clone is actually standing outside the house. The two then head to a restaurant to discuss the matter. The original Miles is forced to seek his clone's help to complete the work project. From that day onwards, Miles relaxes at home, while the clone version assumes responsibilities at the office. As the days pass by, the original Miles starts drinking excessively, contrasting with the continued success of his clone. One day, the clone reminds the original about Kate's house party with her colleagues. However, Miles forgets it and ends up drinking that night as well. As a result, his clone takes control of the party and steals the show with his hilarious stories. At the end of the evening, Kate and the clone head towards the bedroom for some romantic time. The original one, who is secretly watching them, manages to switch places at the last minute. I don't get to sleep with my wife, I do. In the next scene, the original Miles goes to visit his sister Maya, who admits that she knows about his clone. She also reveals that they often spend time together and that the clone is much better than the original. Miles wonders why everyone likes him despite his being a clone, to which his sister responds that one has to make efforts to earn it. As time passes, Miles grows increasingly envious of his clone, and he vows to transform himself to be more like him. He resolves to take matters into his own hands, deciding to carry on his project work independently. However, it's not that easy for him to do so. During a meeting with the company's chairman, Miles fumbles a lot while delivering his pitch. However, he somehow manages to impress Chairman Hilston with the content. After the meeting, Hilston asks Miles to stay in order to talk in private. He recognizes that the work proposal is not originally Miles's, but despite this, he doesn't seem to be affected. Instead, he gives him some words of wisdom. Do it right, even if you are going to cheat. One of the core tenets of sociopathic businessmen worldwide. As Miles makes his way to the celebratory dinner, he notices that his clone is already there, weaving his stories. Overwhelmed with jealousy and anger, Miles finally decides to reveal the secret to everyone. He walks up to the table and takes over the clone's story. <laughs> as everyone watches in shock. In order to handle the situation smoothly, the clone asserts that the other Miles is his twin brother from another city. However, Kate is unable to accept this revelation, so she storms away. At home, both Miles is sit on the couch. One is trying to be overly sweet, while the other is begging to be understood. Kate appears to be livid, but the original Miles explains that the entire situation was created because he was stuck in his monotonous life. He also expresses that he needs his clone because he is better than him and can do everything that he can't. But now that Kate is aware of the truth, they let her decide what to do next. After a bit of thinking, she orders the clone to leave the house, citing that she can't live with two. Feeling bad for him, the original one makes sure that he has a place to live and to make a fresh start. However, it proves to be difficult for the clone to move on from Kate because he still loves her. After all, he shares the same genes and memories as those of the original. Now, his sole companion is Miles' sister, with whom he has a good relationship. As the clone version confides everything to Maya, she suggests that he go out with other girls and find true love for himself. It is probably better than looking at photos of Kate every night. Heeding her advice, the clone takes one of his co-workers, Kaylin, on a date and ends up sleeping with her. That was easy, but he's Paul Rudd, so yeah. However, he remains unsatisfied, feeling emotionally connected to Kate. The same night, he sneaks into the original Miles' place and steals a sample of Kate's hair in order to make a clone of her. He takes the sample to the Top Happy Spa, but the Korean experts refuse to work for him, fearing that they will be arrested. With this rejection, the clone returns back to his apartment. He then decides to create a profile for himself on a dating site, but as he enters all the required details, the only name that comes up is Kate. The 
The scene then cuts to five years before the cloning, and we are shown how Kate and Miles suffer a miscarriage. In order to put this tragedy out of their mind, they relocate to a new house in the suburbs, where they express their hopes and dreams of living happily ever after together. Over time, Kate's job as a designer starts to go well, and the couple eventually moves on in their lives. Fast forwarding to two days before the cloning incident, Kate is seen heading off to work. By this point in time, their married life seems to have deteriorated. Miles and Kate wake up to the same alarm every morning, but they barely speak before heading to work. Kate, time and again, offers signals, but he ignores her completely. He is clearly unable to balance his personal and depressed work life. At one point, their relationship hits rock bottom, and a desperate Kate resorts to posting her profile on dating sites. This happens to be the night before the cloning incident. The following morning, her phone completely blows up with messages from prospective men on the dating sites. Despite this, Miles does not notice, as he is also busy working on his phone. The cloning day is then shown from Kate's perspective. Having a pregnancy near miss and being fed up with Miles' listlessness, she decides to put down money on fertility treatment, regardless of whether Miles is the sperm donor or not. Here, we learn that both Kate and Miles attempted to withdraw the money from their common savings account on the same day, each privately trying to improve their lives without the other. Miles gets there first and withdraws $50,000 for the spa fee, leaving Kate empty-handed. Back to the present, Kate looks through her dating messages and finds her perfect match, who happens to to be none other than Miles' clone. She resolutely heads out the door for a face-to-face -face meeting without telling her husband. From this day onwards, she starts dating the clone, clearly indicating her disinterest in her real husband. One day, Kate drives off to the city for a week for her design conference. Five days later, Miles receives a call from the fertility clinic about an appointment, but this time, he doesn't cancel it. In a hope to make amends in his life, he finally visits the clinic and undergoes the fertility test. In the next scene, the original Miles learns that the success of the clone's ad campaign depends on a small town referendum. Intrigued about what happens, he sneaks into the meeting, only to find out that his clone hasn't shown up yet. Shortly after, the meeting begins, and without the clone, the campaign takes a failing turn. Initially, the original Miles is happy to watch his clone's failure, but he soon realizes that his own fate is tied up in the success of the referendum. As a result, he reluctantly intervenes and persuades some of the locals to vote in favor of Hilston. The next morning, the original Miles receives a call from Kaylin, who asks where he has been for the last seven days. Here, he learns that his clone hasn't gone to work for the entire week. He then frantically tries to contact the clone, and even leaves numerous voice messages, but receives no response. As he prepares to head out to search for the clone, he finds a large crate right outside his house. He drags it into the garage and opens it, revealing a large, dead pig. In a perplexed state, he gets in his car to head towards his clone's apartment. Just then, Miles notices his clone in the rearview mirror, but before he can react, someone puts a black bag over his head and abducts him. The scene then cuts to one week earlier, showing Kate going on a first lunch date with Miles' clone. They enjoy each other's company, and the clone's gentlemanly attitude has a charming effect on her. As their conversation unfolds, Kate invites him to her design conference in the city, to which he happens agrees. This explains the clone's disappearance from work for an entire week. The very next day, the two set off on their trip. Once there, they book a hotel room with a king-sized bed, where they end up getting intimate. Despite the clone being good at every other thing, he has zero experience in the bedroom, resulting in some awkward scenes and a dissatisfied Kate. In the morning, the clone coats her with romance by bringing breakfast in bed and taking her out for a jog. In addition, he buys tickets for the Paris vacation which they always dreamt of. He even offers to relocate there and start a new life together. However, this proves to be too much for Kate, so she rejects his advances. Somewhere deep in her heart, she regrets her actions and decides to end everything. She says that the clone is too great, too loving, and too kind, which is weird for her. Her real husband has been a dick to her for so long that she has Stockholm Syndrome and she craves more. Five days after this incident, the clone is seen drinking at a bar. There, he meets Dan, who is disgruntled after losing his job. As they start conversing, Miles' clone decides to reveal the spa's secret to him. Following this, he drives Dan to the woods and asks him to dig a spot. When the latter does so, he is taken aback to unearth his own dead body. Miles then explains everything 
everything about the spa's cloning practice. After disclosing that they both are the clone versions, Clone Dan is so angry at this revelation that he thinks of filing a case to the authorities, but Clone Miles manages to calm him down. He instead has a better plan in mind. Desperate to live a normal life, Clone Miles opts to take a drastic step, abducting the original Miles. For this, he goes to a convenience store and buys all the necessary abduction kits. Upon preparing everything, he drives towards Miles' place to execute his plan. Moments before doing so, he notices a van stop in front of the house. Two men get out of it and abduct Miles before driving away. Although it is an unusual situation, the clone seems to be happy about it. Meanwhile, the original Miles is taken to the FDA building, revealing that he has been arrested for the illegal act of cloning. Due to budget constraints, Miles is kept in the FDA's lactation room rather than a proper holding facility. The investigating officers, who want to get to the bottom of this human cloning operation, put him through a lie detector test in order to find out whether he is a clone or not. However, the malfunctioning machine leads to insufficient evidence, resulting in Miles' release from custody. On his way back home, he receives a call from the fertility clinic, informing that there is nothing wrong with him and that he is perfectly ready to have children. Upon arriving back home, he notices Kate waiting for him on the stairs. She is ready to confess her shame in cheating on him with his clone. But before she can do so, Miles stops her from talking and instead apologizes for everything he has done to hurt her in the past. He admits that he had forgotten to give importance to her and only prioritized work. Before she can even reply, he plays their wedding song and pulls her in close to dance together. Meanwhile, the clone is secretly watching all of this from upstairs. This prompts him to accept his defeat, so he returns back to his apartment and contemplates shooting himself. He holds the gun to his head, but is unable to gather enough courage to pull the trigger. When the original Miles and Kate stop dancing, she finally reveals everything about her conference trip, including that she slept with his clone. Unfortunately, this leaves our guy fuming, so he grabs an axe and storms towards the clone's apartment. Upon reaching there, he grabs a gun and points it at the clone. However, he can't pull the trigger either, so he drops the weapon and gets into a physical brawl. As they fight, they turn their rage against a table and smash it to pieces. They also smash the ratings charts with this sexiest man on earth on sexiest man on earth action. Breathing heavily, the two continue wrestling until the original Miles nearly smothers the clone to death with a pillow. At the last moment, the original Miles snaps out of his anger and frantically performs CPR, reviving him back to life. After this, both of them lie down on the floor and reconcile by apologizing to each other. They express that they just want them to become a better version of themselves. Just then, Kate walks in and apologizes to both versions of Miles, asserting that it's been a monumentally confusing time for her. In a surprising turn of events, she announces that she is pregnant. However, she adds that the father will never be known because they both share the same DNA and she has slept with both of them. Despite the unconventional situation, they aren't affected by it as they are simply overjoyed with the fact that they are having a baby. The series ends with the three sharing a group hug, eagerly anticipating a family together and beginning to accept that there are threesomes in their near future. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.